it's never too late to find yourself in something that you never tried it. You you may want to be an actor, but you may want to be some a teacher or something else. But one day it happens. It's like a normal thing that you're gonna find yourself who you who you, who you really are. So I I I feel like I found myself in this film that I can be an actor and I will continue. Welcome to the SAG After Foundation's Conversations at Home program. I'm Carla Sosenko. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Anaito Walizada of Fremont. Hello. Hi. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Anaito Walizada. I am um, the first real, uh, the first lead of uh, Fremont movie, Dunya's Character. Yes. Thank you Amazing. so much. For it's, it's such a beautiful movie. It's such a quiet affecting very moving movie obviously you played Danya the lead character who is a refugee from Afghanistan who has relocated she's fled her home and come to Fremont California this journey Danya's journey is not unlike yours and I would love to hear a little bit if you're comfortable sharing just a little bit of your own personal journey uh, yes, uh, for sure. My, uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, my name is Anaita Valizada. I came from Afghanistan in 2021 after what happened to Afghanistan and uh, I had to leave the country. So my about my background, I was a journalist and I worked for three years. I studied international, international relations but I couldn't finish because uh, Taliban came. So I came to the United States and uh, I started my life here. And yeah. So this was your first role. Is this is this the first time you've ever acted? Uh, yes, this is my first time <laughs> being an actor. And uh, <laughs> it was a quite like interesting uh, journey for me. Uh, yeah. How did it happen? How did you get involved with the film? Um, yeah, after I came, I was looking to, and I looked up to my life. I had to, I said this sentence to myself, I have to start again. And one of my friends asked me, what, you're, what are you going to do? I said, whatever I will do to start again. And because of my background, he told me, well, will you do some, will you, will you do acting? I said, yeah. I will try. <laughs> and then uh, after a few months, he sent me the information about Fremont movie because uh, uh, the director, Babak Jalali, and our producer, they posted a cast call on the social media. So he sent me the information uh, and I sent an email to Babak and we had like uh, two, uh, two Zoom audition and yeah, I was really happy about it. And I like this story. It was a really good time to tell that kind of a story because uh situation in Afghanistan, newcomers came to the United States and they their life. It was a really uh, interesting story for me. So and a really good opportunity for me to start again. Yeah. I mean, I it's it's kind of crazy to think about because I I imagine that there was trauma and, and difficulty in, in your journey of coming over the same way Danya experiences it. And yet you end up in this film about a story that's a lot like yours. And I'm, I'm curious, how much of your own experience did you draw on for Danya? Or do you see a real difference between the two of you? Uh, yes, we came from different background. Uh, I was a journalist, but she was a translator in Afghanistan. She worked for uh, American soldiers and I worked for uh, national televisions. We were really different. We had re really different backgrounds. But what what happened for me and for Dunya's character, it was our uh, time that we lost everything. We left our family. We uh 
left them behind and that feeling we left our country uh with all those things that happened in country women they lost their our rights and freedom we lost our democracy you know in our country uh after I came here and this movie, I really, I really re- relate myself to this um, Dunya's character because we have similarities, which is our new life in new country with a, a, it's kind of a stranger, a stranger land we call, we can call it because uh, when you came to a new country, you want to start uh, your life. It's it's not going to be easy, which was not for me, which which was not for Dunya's character. Yeah. And I found a lot of similarities between me and Dunya's. Yeah. Yeah. And I, mean, I felt it. I felt it. I really felt every scene of the movie. So, yeah. I I feel like you can tell as a viewer because it is such a moving performance. It's such a, there's a, there's a lot of, there are a lot of funny moments, but there's a lot of sadness in the film as well. And a lot of loneliness and solitude. Um, and I, I'm i just amazed as someone who's also a journalist, I'm trying to think of making that transition and I can't wrap my head around becoming an actor. So what, how did you do that? How did you, did you train in a particular way? Did it just come naturally for you? How did you just become an actor? Uh, I believe it was, uh, I, I had no training, like I wasn't prepared for acting, but what helped me it was my background, which was, uh, I was a uh, journalist, so in front of camera, I was quite comfortable and I had like my confident, I was fine with camera and all crew and everyone, but the only, uh, but the other thing was uh, Bobak helped me. He really helped me with, um, because for uh, English is not my first language and in this point I had a lot of uh, uh, I faced a lot of challenging things with my language and uh, he helped me Uh, he um, sat with me and we um, went through scrap like two times three times and also I had my uh, our film producer she also helped me with the language but I don't know. It just happened. I feel like, <laughs> yeah, it, it was Bobak's direction. And also, I, I'm. I want to say that he, because he worked with non-actors, he had experience. He knew it how to direct an non uh, non-actors. So I guess he did a lot for me. I mean, it really serves the film because it is such a real felt. You really feel immersed. In Danya's life, and not just her life, but the the life of the people around her, and the life of the people, the other people who have come from Afghanistan who live where she lives, and um, it makes sense. I think that it would be a non actor, although I think you're an actor now. I think <laughs> when, you, when you've been the lead in a film, you're an actor now. Thank you. Yeah. I will try to call myself an actor. (laughs) Really? Is that something you want to keep doing? Uh, Yes. I found it really interesting. And I found myself like it's uh, it's never too late to find yourself in something that you never tried it. You you may want to be an actor, but you may want to be some a teacher or something else. But one day it happens. It's like a normal thing that you're gonna find yourself who you who you, who you really are. So I I I feel like I found myself in this film that I can be an actor and I will continue. Oh my God! Is there are there? I mean, that's a first of all. You're you're pretty young, or right? So I mean, it's a it's a wonderful, beautiful lesson, and it's a true one. But you also you also still have loads and lo- the fact that you were already a working journalist that you're on career number two already is amazing. Um, and oh. you know, I, I but I think it's a really good lesson for people of of every age that you can reinvent yourself and and. Um, I'm I'm so curious to hear if there are other specific kinds of roles that you're interested in. Is it important to you to tell specific kinds of stories? Are you open to lots of different roles? Um, 
my uh i will what the point is like i want to tell the story like human story i want to tell a lot there's a lot of story every one of us has their own story that has to be to uh, told that um i will try my best to do um, actually i'm open to do a lot of things <laughs> so i want to try many different uh roles and i want to see how can i be in in a different role so yeah uh, but yeah i'm open to different roles yeah that's amazing what let's talk a little bit about the experience you said, obviously, the cameras didn't phase you because you were used to that being a journalist. What were some of the things that were difficult or that were the most challenging to do? Uh, there's two scene in the movie that I, um, a part is karaoke, which uh, that Dunya, Dunya have to cry. Dunya has to cry on this, that scene. Um I found that one was for me was challenging because I never did that like that someone came and to tell you to cry <laughs> it's really hard to do that but uh yeah that scene was for me a little bit challenging because we took that for one uh one shot like how do you say it like one take we took that for yeah one take, yeah, yeah. And Bobak told me, uh, asked me to cry in a scene. If you can, he said, if you can try it. And I was like, I'll try my ways. And then when uh, Joanna started uh, doing karaoke, I felt it. And I had so much in my mind going on. And I feel like that one was really real. Like I didn't talk, I didn't think about, but Bobak told me it was all my own experience that came. So yeah and the next one was uh, the scene that she has to yell or scream at uh, Timur Afghan man really? <laughs> that scene was for me my for, for the first time in my life I I had to scream at someone and I told Bobak I never did this before I don't have I never heard myself screaming at someone or yelling at someone so it was really funny. Like we did that two or four, five times. They took that take five times. And uh, yeah, I always hear my voice and I'm like, I don't want to hear it. It's so <laughs> bad. <laughs> so yeah, that part for me was a little bit challenging. That's really funny because I would expect the crying to be difficult. There are actors who have been working for years and years who find it difficult to cry. You did it in one take, yeah. but then yelling <laughs> was difficult. Yeah. It was, it was really difficult for me. Yeah. Oh to, my goodness. Yeah, because I never did it. I uh, taught to be quiet in my life. Like in, in mm -hmm. my family, never yelled at someone. Uh, mm -hmm. For the first time I, I heard my own voice, like my own loud voice. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> you don't like it. But after you did it, did it feel freeing? Did it feel good at least to do? Yeah, of yeah. course. <laughs> yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. So maybe some more, some more screaming. Yeah. If, if you want. And you don't uh, have to listen to it after. Yeah. <laughs> I think I can do it after that. I can, I can scream like as much as loud I can. I will do it. <laughs> good. Good. I'm wondering about uh, working with the other actors in the film. Obviously, Jeremy Allen White is in it. Greg Turkington, Hilda Schmeling. You mentioned her character, Joanna. That karaoke scene is so weird and so moving. And I understand. I felt like I wanted to cry after. I'm wondering if they were at all... Um, how you work together, if they were helpful, if you ever asked them for tips or guidance or anything regarding acting? Um, they knew that I was uh, I was new to mm. the film industry and as, as an actor, but I did not knew that they were professional actors. They acted before or they're famous or they have a lot of experience in the, with acting. So... I think the point that really helped me was not knowing who they were. 
<laughs> because uh, the first day that we start shooting our movie, it was the last scene, uh, the D with Jeremy. So our director and our film producer, they just threw me on the set and <laughs> I did not know who were they, but they were really supportive. Like, I want to say my favorite scene, all of them are really lovely and I love them but my favorite scene is uh with and Dr. Anthony because I feel like I complete my um therapy session with him because <laughs> he it feels really real for me being in a, in a doctor's office and talking with him mm. and yeah he he start uh, actually what I learned what I heard but I learned again that he, when he found that I'm non-actors, he start memorizing. I think that's it wasn't his way to memorize this uh, every dialogues. But when he found that I'm non-actors, he start memorizing his uh, dialogues. So that that way, I feel com- uh, it made me feel comfortable. And I remember the other day it was. Uh, I heard I was we were shooting the scene that she's driving and I heard a scream and I was like what happened we were at the nail in Fremont there was a street called nail valley something I I don't know if I can pronounce that right but I asked what happened who was that scream and I was that it was a girl that she was screaming at um, and she was so excited to see Jeremy (laughs) and (laughs) <laughs> and then uh, I asked my producer what happened and she told me finish your uh, part and come I will tell you what what just happened and then I found out that Jeremy was walking to get uh, uh, coffee but a girl was so excited to see her see him <laughs> yeah and but overall everyone in the film and um cast and crew everyone were supportive and I'm so grateful to have that experience for the first time being in a really good environment and being with really good people and co-workers yeah that's so interesting what you said about the therapy scenes with Dr. Anthony so Greg Turkington's character yeah that, that wasn't something he discussed with you he just he just knew instinctively that if he stuck to the script that would be better for you. Yes. I think he, he and, and Bobak talked about it. And <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. That's really, that's a that's lovely. That's really sort of wonderful because he's also an actor who does kind of zany sort yeah. of probably things. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I love that. That's a very, that's very sweet. Yeah, he's really sweet. And the point is because English is it was not my first language. It was just eight for me. It was eight months that I arrived, and I was the first day that I arrived. I wasn't able to speak a word, so I guess they knew it, and they also want to help me with that because my first language is Farsi. So yeah. Do you? I mean, th- this is amazing to me that. Eight months, you arrived here not speaking any English. And eight months later, you were starring in a film playing a character who, I mean, some some of the film is in Farsi. So yeah. so Danya does have scenes in Farsi. Um, particularly, I love the scenes with in the restaurant. <laughs> Very sweet watching watching the the soaps. Um, but to to carry an entire film. In a language that you've only just learned, I can't, do. I mean, do you appreciate how impressive that is? I can't. I just, it's huge. Uh, now I understand. It's uh, not easy to learn an, an another language and be in the environment that you cannot understand most of the what they are saying. But I kind of find myself being really good with communicating with people. Mm-hmm. And I really appreciate my uh, others effort with me and uh, like others help and also my own um, situation on that time. But thank you so much. I mean, it's a really, it's just, 
an incredibly beautiful film and um, a really important film, I feel like, for people to watch right now. And I'm just wondering if there's anything that we didn't get to talk about, um, if there are any like particular parts of filming or anything, are you doing any specific kind of training now that you know that you like acting? Are there, are there things that you want to learn or do you just want to keep kind of going about, I mean, it worked the way you did it. You just went in and did it. Yeah. Um, I want to continue, yes, uh, but I didn't have, a, like, I did not do any, tra- I didn't get any training before, but yeah. after that, uh, I want to continue and take some training and go to classes and take some classes and continue acting also. Yeah. At one point, is about the film because I believe it was really good time to tell that story, and what I'm thinking right now, it's... Um, I I always get to say this to everyone, whatever I got at the time and meet new people and or be in a panel or uh, q and I mentioned this, that um, please don't forget about Afghanistan because, um, yes, we know a lot of things going on in the world and there's also humans that they are looking at the world and they are looking for the one sentence that girls can go to school like this is the only thing that girls are looking it's not just about one girl it's about millions of women and girls that they have no right in that in my country from education to going to work or having a financial in, uh, independ- independency uh yeah Moments are banned from education, going to work, wearing colorful. They have to wear black. They have to cover their face. They don't have the right that I have here. So it's a guilt for, I feel guilt about this. And I want to say this to please don't forget about Afghanistan, about Afghan women. Yeah. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Did you say you feel guilt about it? It is. It is. I have the... I have freedom here. I can sing a song. I can hear to music. I can I can listen to music. I can talk freely. I can go to work. I can walk outside without a man. I can study. But all these things that I mentioned, a woman or millions of women in Afghanistan and girls, they cannot do this. So it's... I feel guilt about this because they don't have this right. And I want to be the voice for Afghan women in Afghanistan. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you said all that. This is a way to be that voice. This film as well, um, even though it's, it's not a documentary, obviously, but it does tell a story of, of someone who comes over by herself and, and um, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm so grateful for you taking the time and, and talking to us. Um, I am so excited to see what you do next. And um, I, I don't know. I just, I, I, I'm moved and I don't really know what to say other than thank you for, for sharing all of that. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate the time and the opportunity that you gave me. And one more thing, I really appreciate and I'm really grateful because of the uh, because of the saga strike. Uh, you gave me the I don't know how to say it in English, but uh, the waiver. Oh. A waiver. A waiver. Yes. Waiver. Yeah. Yes. I got to I got to talk about Afghanistan because of the sag. Uh, after all, and I really oh. appreciate that. And thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. Okay. Well, on behalf of the SAG After Foundation, I want to thank you for sharing your experiences, process, and craft with your fellow performers. I know that anybody watching this is going to get so much from you and so much from this film. So thank you again. And um, we'll see what's next. I can't wait. Thank you. Thank you.